from a charming serial killer in the Ted Bundy tapes. He just doesn't look like the type to kill somebody. To an eccentric lover of wild animals plotting his violent revenge in Tiger King. Joe says, will you go to Florida and what? Kill that fucking lady. Our morbid fascination with real life horror dates back centuries. In the 1500s, British writers wrote about violent crimes and punishments in pamphlets and sold them to the public. People once bought tickets to public hangings in the 19th century. And the real life mysteries on NBC's Dateline have captivated television viewers for over 30 years now. But in 2014, one podcast began a new era of true crime intrigue. It's Serial, one story told week by week. I'm Sarah Koenig. In Serial's first season, journalist Sarah Koenig investigated whether high school student Adnan Sayed actually murdered his ex-girlfriend, Heyman Lee. At the time, the podcast became the fastest to reach more than 5 million downloads on iTunes. Even late night talk shows like The Colbert Report were excited about the podcast. What does it mean to have the most popular podcast in history? Do you get paid in iTunes gift cards? What is your... <laughs> I'm trying to follow the money here. To date, listeners have downloaded Serial's first season more than 300 million times. The year after the podcast's success, Netflix tried its hand at bingeable true crime. Stephen Avery spent 18 years in prison for something he didn't do. More than 19 million people watched the hit series Making a Murderer within the first month after its debut, according to the streaming service. One psychologist told NPR our obsession with true crime is actually normal and healthy to a point. He said that's because true crime stories appeal to our innate curiosity and interest in good versus evil. Being curious about the mind of a killer is also why women in particular may be more interested in crime than men. In 2010, the University of Illinois found women wrote 70% of Amazon reviews of true crime books. They also make up 75% of true crime podcast listeners, according to a 2018 survey. Experts say the genre might comfort women as they learn how to defend against an attacker or survive a dangerous situation. One police psychologist says, we may also be drawn to the adrenaline rush true crime provides, along with a sense of relief that we're not in danger. First is a sense of not me. Um, this feeling of I, I'm interested, but I'm interested because it calms me that it's, I'm not the victim. But true crime may be booming now because of our binge culture. In a 2017 study, researchers found nearly three quarters of Americans have binged content, some watching for five hours at a time. Crime is the perfect binge, according to anthropologist Grant McCracken. He says it allows us to escape into a world completely different than our own. The pandemic also elevated our intrigue as we sat at home bored and restless. Criminology professor Scott Bond writes, true crime allows us to play investigator and fills the human love of solving puzzles. Just take CrimeCon, for example. Since 2017, thousands of people from regular fans to celebrities like Selena Gomez flock to the massive true crime convention. Tickets run up to $1,600 for the chance to hear from favorite podcasters and TV stars, or even get Nancy Grace to autograph a wine bottle featuring missing persons cases. But even with the growing obsession, Experts aren't worried about us getting desensitized to crime. Crime and conflict is an aspect of the human condition that's been with us from the beginning. It will always be with us. 